In the air to right and deep back is Aquino near the wall. Gone! Three run homer, Ian Happ. Cubs lead six to two. What is going on, everybody? And welcome back to the Hum Baby Baseball channel. This is Eric, and today we're going to continue team previews by myself for this one. But we're talking Chicago Cubs. I wanted to jump into this team because they just made a move today and signed to a major league deal, Edwin Rios, who has been a prospect for the Dodgers for, it seems like, forever, and is a pretty damn good player, a good hitter. He's had his struggles with injuries and underproduction at times, as well as simply being blocked by just uh, so many superstars in Los Angeles. So I'm really happy for Edwin Rios. I think he'll get an opportunity in Chicago, and he actually played pretty well in 2022, only in 86 at-bats. He did have... 21 hits, seven home runs, a pretty damn good home run ratio right there. I mean, this is what he's known for, big power. He has 20 career home runs in just 260 career at-bats. That's it. That, he has to only 260 career at-bats through four seasons, and he's been in the Dodgers system since 2015. But in the minor leagues in 2019, with AAA Oklahoma City, he hit 31 homers, drove in 91 runs, and had a 270 average. And at one point earlier in his minor league career, he was, I remember the number one Dodgers prospect on some list, Baseball America or something, had him as the number one prospect in the Dodgers system. And unfortunately, he just never got a full opportunity with LA. Part of that is injuries, like I said, but this is going to be a fresh start for him. And this is just the beginning of the, I mean, this is just the latest, I should say, in the Cubs offseason. They have been very active in trying to improve this team after a very rough 2022, a disappointing 2022 in which they went 74 and 88, still third place, but that's only because the Reds and Pirates lost 100 games. So it wasn't like an absolute disaster of a season, you know, 100 type loss season, but 88 losses, pretty unacceptable for the Chicago Cubs, but they are kind of rebuilding. I mean, they did lose some pieces and it's not a huge surprise, but they are looking to bounce back very quickly, and that's why they've made such big offseason moves. And we're going to talk about these signings here and some of these splashes for the offseason, as well as talk about who they lost in the offseason. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. And they brought back Drew Smiley uh, for a couple of years. So Drew Smiley, obviously, as a Giants fan, we remember uh, Drew Smiley, who was really good for the Giants. In fact, we got him. He wasn't anything overly spectacular or he wasn't some kind of huge free agent. He came over here. He had this great strikeout ratio and uh, just looked really good for us. Ended up signing a deal with the Braves, making some more money, and now he's with the Cubs. His strikeout stuff wasn't as great as it was back in 2020 with the Giants, but he's still been pretty effective. He was 11-4 and four with uh, the Braves in 21, and then with the Cubs, 7-8, and 3.47 ERA. So the record not that great. Maybe he didn't get the best run support, but ERA, pretty good. Gave up 101 hits in 106 innings with 91 strikeouts. So a nice guy to bring back for the rotation. Drew Smiley, obviously, he's not an ace-type pitcher, but still very solid. And then the Cody Bellinger signing. This is an interesting one, obviously, because Bellinger has just kind of fallen off of a cliff, but he's still a former MVP. So two former Dodger sluggers with Edward Rios and, of course, the bigger slugger, Cody Bellinger, 27 years old. Only 27 years old. There's no reason he can't bounce back if he can figure out what the heck is going wrong with his swing. I mean, when I look at his swing, I've always thought his swing looked absolutely just wild, just crazy. How does he make that thing work? I thought that was going to give him a problem, you know, when his, you know, his, his bat speed slows down in his 30s, mid-30s maybe. I didn't think it would give him a problem so soon, though. And... Bellinger hit just 210 in 2022 after hitting 165 in 2021. The power potential is there, but not even that is not as great as it once was. He hit 19 home runs and 504 at bats. That's not what you really want from Bellinger. If you're going to get him 500 at bats, you expect at least 30, preferably over 40 home runs, but you got to go back to his MVP year of 2019 when he hit 47 homers on 115 RBIs. He won a gold glove, silver slugger. He was an all-star. I mean, this is also the Rookie of the Year winner. I mean, at 17, he was awesome. 18, he had a bit of a down year. 2019, he won the MVP. 2020, he had a bit of a down year. And you thought 2021, you know, if the pattern continues, he would have a big year. Instead, it was just, it's just been terrible every year. So honestly, the Cubs, I mean, you can't expect Cody Bellinger to be a 2019 MVP. That's best case scenario. You just have to hope he comes out there and can hit 30 plus home runs for you all and keep that batting average respectable, you know, 230 or better, something like that. 
And uh, I think you'll get what you want while playing, you know, good defense. Obviously, he's great out in center field, great speed and everything. So I, I like the pickup for the Cubs. It's just a one-year deal. Prove yourself deal. It is a lot of money, $17.5 million. But, I mean, the Cubs, like I said, after last season, and then if that was it, if I just got signed Bellinger and, and Reels that would, and Smiley, I don't think that'd be enough to really talk about turning around big time. But you also sign a whole bunch of other guys including, and how can I continue without talking about Dansby Swanson? What a killer signing. Seven years, $177 million for one of the best shortstops in the game. And I love Dansby Swanson. This was like my favorite free agent shortstop. Even though I know there were a bunch of great ones. Don't get me wrong. Of course, this was a great offseason for shortstops with Carlos Correa. But Dansby Swanson is just an all-around great player who stays healthy. That's why I love him. He's going to play 160 games. I don't think he's missed a game since like 2019. He played in 60, all 60 in 2020, and he's played in at least 160 games the last couple of years. He is just an absolute Iron Man who is going to give you elite defense, good strong power, at least 20 home runs, probably 25 plus bombs with a very good batting average and a good on base percentage. And that's all you can ask for. He drives in runs, not going to cause any controversy. It's just going to show up every day and play great baseball and help your team win. And that's what Dansby Swanson does. And he's just a great player. I think this is a fabulous signing. You also get more starting pitching help with Jamison Tyon, who has had some really good years, obviously, in the past. And even last year went 14-5 and five with an ERA under four. Just another solid pitcher to add to the rotation. I mean, you have to love the fact that they brought back Smiley and picked up another very solid starting pitcher in Jamison Tyon. Then they addressed the bullpen with Michael Fulmer, who used to be a starter. So uh, he has some ability to start, but he's been in the bullpen for the last few years. Pitched pretty well with the Twins last season. Then they also signed Brad Boxberger, a veteran pitcher, a bullpen arm. He pitched great last year, had an ERA under three, I believe, for the Brewers. So you get Boxberger, you get a couple of bullpen arms there, and then you even bring over a awesome player with a great story. And that is Trey Mancini, who beats cancer. He comes back and he wins a world title with the Astros. He didn't play that great in the uh, postseason, but or at least not in the World Series, if I recall. But Trey Mancini, big power hitter, great overall player, great guy, it seems. And so, I mean, and, and then you also bring over Eric Hosmer, a, a, a big name from the past. He's a little past his prime at this point, but Eric Hosmer, a great defensive first baseman. Obviously, we remember him with the Royals in the 2014 World Series. He's been with the Padres lately. But Eric Hosmer um, was signed as well. I mean, this is a, a, a wild, a, just a crazy offseason. The Cubs just, just really kind of quietly just signed help for their entire team. They addressed the bullpen, the rotation, um, the lineup as well. And uh, I think that they've done a great job in the offseason. And just to, to put a uh, hopefully an explanation, ex exclamation mark on that today, because I don't think there's any whole lot of other free agents out there. Um, they go ahead and sign Edwin Rios. And um, the Cubs had a great offseason. I'm not saying they're going to go win the division now, but um, hey, I mean, they're in the NL Central, and we'll get to that in a while. Uh, at the end of the video, we'll talk about the division, but it's not impossible. And with expanded playoffs, you never know. So, they, But we got to take a look at the team and see how these new signings fit in with of the team. And by the way, who did they lose this offseason? You take a look at uh, some of their losses. Okay, they lost um, Jason Hayward, who was pretty much not really doing that much at this point in his career. He signed a minor league contract. Wade Miley. Yes, you lose Wilson Contreras. That hurts. You know, a longtime catcher for the Cubs. You know, you hate to see that. Um, he signed with the Cardinals. But I mean, it, that's your biggest loss right there, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that your biggest loss is Wilson Contreras. And I mean, bottom line is the Cubs got better this offseason. And look at how many free agent signings are in this lineup here that were just signed for this season. All of these darker green free agents signed in this offseason. This offseason, that's one, two, three, four, five of the nine names. The majority are free agent signings with Tucker Barnhart, Cody Bellinger, Trey Mancini, Eric Hosmer, and Dansby Swanson. And you add that, not to mention... How do I not? How do I forget to mention Seiya Suzuki, um, who was also added? So make it six new players are thrown into this lineup. <laughs> I mean, th th this lineup is just night and day from last season. 
You still got Nico Horner, who's your first round pick there. Ian Happ, who was, you know, the man last year. And Christopher Morell, who's going to be right here on this list, is the third baseman as of now. It's a pretty damn solid freaking starting lineup. If you're a Cubs fan, I would think you're pretty damn excited about this season. I would be. I would be just thrilled about this uh, just to see what these guys can do as a team. Yeah, they're not all... I mean, if they were guys were all in their prime, the Cubs would be ready to win the World Series. If you get 2019 Cody Bellinger, you know, if you get Eric Hosmer in his prime, you, you know, you have Danzy Swanson give his best season possible. Um, this, this, you know, and say a Suzuki comes over here and lives up to the potential, lives up to the hype. Um, yeah, this, I don't think all that's going to come together like that. You can't really expect everyone to have their best year, especially guys who are past their prime like Hosmer and Bellinger. We don't know. Bellinger could freaking get cut halfway through the year hitting 080 we don't know what bellinger gonna do um he's just very unpredictable but you have to think he's working hard on his swing and he's gonna, ch gonna change the scenery and let's just see i mean i'm interested to see what bellinger can do um i mean he's, he's plugged in here at this number seven spot um and as for christopher morell this is the kind of guy i'd love to get a cubs fans perspective on but I do know that he played really well in the minor leagues. He had a really good batting average, and he came up and he showed big power last year. But Christopher Morrell um, showed some serious potential, and that's why he's plugged in right now into the lineup. Don't know how he's going to play. And Tucker Barnhart is a bit of a downgrade there. Obviously, he's an experienced big leader with the Reds and everything. Um, and by the way, look at the look at the lineup and the you know the lefty righty. You, know, you got a switch hitter in Hap. You got Hosmer, Bellinger, and Barnhart. Very nice array a different very nice mix up here of lefties and righties in the lineup so the lineup is much improved the rotation um the bench real quick with patrick wisdom is still there zach mckinstry another former dodger who just absolutely tore it up at times in uh, the triple a system of uh, the triple a team for the dodgers and has shown a lot in, the, in in his small opportunities he's had so we'll see if zach mckinstry could get another veteran in jan gomes got a lot of veteran players for sure um Maybe too many for some, but when you plug in like guys like Swanson, Mancini, um, you still got Happ and Suzuki. These guys are not you know over the hill yet. Um, you got a young guy, Nico Horner. Uh, it's not like there's a bunch of you know the oldest guy is Hosmer, 33, which is really not that old at, at this point in, in in baseball history. It is feels a little older than it used to back in the 80s. It was normal to have 32, 33 year olds. That's kind of tending to be on the older side these days. But, you know, Hosmer's still a great player. So, or at least a very good player, shall I say. So, you have the rotation. Like I said, they signed Tyon. You got Marcus Stroman as well, who was signed um, last offseason. Justin Steele, Drew Smiley, and Keegan Thompson. And they also have uh, the professor uh, who should be back. Um, and his name is not coming to my mind, but you guys know exactly who I'm talking about. Now I got to look it up. Kyle Hendricks. For some reason, his name couldn't wouldn't pop in my head. But yeah, Kyle Hendricks should be back at some point this year. Um, and once he gets back, that's going to help out a lot. But yeah, I mean, Marcus Stroman went 6-7 and seven last year, 3.5 ERA. He's not a massive strikeout. I mean, he'll strike guys out, but not at, a, at an insane pace. But he gives you a chance to win pretty much every time out. A very solid pitcher for a long time, obviously going back to the, the Mets and the Blue Jays. So, Tyon, we talked about. Justin Steele. Pitched so well in the minor leagues that he moved up all the way to AAA in 2021, and he was just lights out, earned a promotion, and he's pitched very well uh, with the Cubs ever since. Struck out 126 and 119 last year. The record wasn't that great at 4-7, and seven, but the ERA 3.18 tells me it probably wasn't all his fault. Um, maybe he didn't get some run support. Not really sure. Again, um, didn't watch him pitch that much. But what I, what I did see was pretty impressive. Drew Smiley, obviously solid, and Keegan Thompson here at the bottom. And you just wait um, to get some help here at some point in the season once Kyle Hendricks comes back. And uh, Brandon Hugh, look at all the closer possible. You guys, I mean, that's a good problem to have when you have a whole bunch of guys who could be your closer. Not really clear who it's going to be. Maybe a closer by committee. I heard that David Ross has mentioned that's a possibility. Um, but you do have Brandon Hughes, who I imagine would be kind of your go-to closer, striking out 68 and 57 last year at 3.12 ERA, eight saves in his rookie year last season. So he's kind of a, a young guy with amazing stuff that looks like he's going to be kind of the go-to guy as a closer. But of course, I mentioned Michael Fulmer, Brad Boxberger, um, veteran guys who have experience. They can get guys out. 
And then after that, um, pretty good mix of guys here. Uh, mostly righties. Obviously, look a little short on lefties out of the pin, but you know, it doesn't matter as long as the splits are solid. It doesn't really matter. So um, the rotation, I mean, excuse me, the bullpen could be a weakness. Time will tell. You know, I mean, I think overall, um, the team got a lot better. Whether they got good enough to, you know, be a playoff team now, I don't know. Um, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna think about that for my uh, predictions this year. But I just love what they've done this offseason. I mean, adding a bunch of names. You got a reason to go to the ballpark if you live in Chicago, um, and if you're a Cubs fan. Just because, I mean, you got Swanson, you got Hosmer, you got Bellinger, you got names out there, Mancini. And, you know, you add to the rotation with Tyon. Uh, you bring back Smiley. And there are also some names on the way like Brennan Davis, Kevin Alcantara, and uh, Jordan Wicks. I remember uh, the, when they drafted him, I really liked Jordan Wicks. It was like he's in double A right now. So um, not sure if he'll make his debut this year or not. Probably not, but possibly. Um, ben Brown and, of course, Alexander Canario, a name I'm a little familiar with as a Giants fan. Um, and it looks like he's number nine right now. Brendan Davis, uh, just looking at his stats briefly from the minor leagues last year, only hit 180, not very good batting average there, five home runs. Um, but in 2021, he hit 260 with 19 homers. The stats don't pop too much, but it's taken in like 2017, 2018. He's been in the system for a long time, I think 2018. And then um, as for Kevin Alcantara, Hit 345 in 2021 in 34 games. Very impressive with um, five home runs, 24 driven in. Neither of these guys have, I mean, a 345 average is pretty impressive, but last year, 273. Um, that's a relatively small sample size for that 345. Last year, 273 in 112 games, hit 15 homers. So, I mean, both these guys look solid statistically. Uh, statistically. Uh, Cade Horton uh, just coming up, you know, getting his career started. So, a lot of these guys are a ways off. Um, and there's some of these guys that could make an impact this year. Some arms, Miguel Amaya is another catcher, uh, should be big league ready pretty soon. But I don't know if the Cubs have, you know, the hottest, uh, farm system out there. And that's kind of the problem in that these guys really are going to need to stay healthy that they have. These veterans are going to have to stay healthy. And if they do, and they're halfway productive, uh, I think the Cubs have a chance to have a pretty good season. Obviously the Cardinals and Brewers have kind of dominated the central for a while now and they're continuing to look really good. Um, I love the Cardinals. Every year, they're just looking really solid. We'll have a team preview for them and the Brewers very soon, covering the NL Central. Um, and we'll just have to wait and see how it goes. The Reds and Pirates have marginally improved, but uh, you know, I, I don't see it. I, this is probably the, the standings for last year will probably be a, a, the main predictions for this year. Um, I'm going to shake things up a little bit, though, and you'll see that when I do my official predictions video. But Cubs can get in the playoffs. It's not an impossibility. They should certainly be able to get back to 500 or better than 500. And with expanded playoffs, that's almost good enough to you know hang in there for a long time. Being 500, you can hang in there until late in the year until you get eliminated. Or you can even slide into the playoffs depending on how things go with a 500 or slightly better than 500 record. So um, with expanded playoffs, Cubs got something to fight for this year. They've gotten a lot better in my opinion. Uh, and I think that we'll, I think that they have a chance. I think they have a chance. And this is certainly a team that could get hot. Things can come together and make out something happens at the trade deadline. This is one of those teams to look out for. Don't just assume the oh, Cubs suck. They ain't gonna, don't just assume that. It's a team to possibly look out for. And you got to love their offseason. Let me know if you're a Cubs fan if I'm off on that. Maybe you don't. Maybe you don't want these guys. Maybe you don't want old timers. Freaking Hosmer past his prime. Get rid of him. What the hell? With freaking Bellinger stinks. Yeah, I mean, I kind of get your point there. But anyway, y'all have a great day. Let me know what you think of the Chicago Cubs coming into the 2023 season. And um, what do you think of the signing of Edwin Rios um, to continue his career in Chicago after being stuck in that Dodgers farm system for so long? You guys have a great day. Hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe, and we'll talk to y'all next time.